All right, guys, today we're going to do some stainless steel flux cord gas shielded wire, but hold on one sec. Hey, Mike, you smoke? No, why? Why don't you turn on the fume extractor? Lucky for us, today's video is brought to you by Praxair's Tip Extraction Fume Collector. Praxair helps you reduce your operator exposure to welding particulates. When paired with a fume extraction torch, a high-powered ProStar Tip Extraction Collector delivers fume extraction at the tip of the welding torch. By capturing more particulate closer to the source and pulling the fumes through the gun, operator exposure to welding fume is greatly reduced. The ProStar Tech delivers on average greater than 95% collection efficiency for in-position welds in accordance with AWS F1-2 standards. And that's a good thing. This man gun doesn't smoke. Now let's get to the video. All right, let's get into it. We got some 304 stainless steel. We got some one foot coupons. Uh, man cup beveled these out for us with a 22 and a half degree bevel and then hit them up with a flapper wheel to get rid of any dross and uh, carbon deposits on here. We want to, you know, kind of set ourselves up for success. So, you know, take some time, clean your base metal. You know, prep work is key. Welding is about 80% prep work, 20% welding. Uh, if you get all your prep work in there done nice, neat, pay attention to the details. The welding should go very uh, fairly simple for you and you should have good results. Uh, we've got it tacked up on the front and I got a couple tack welds on the back. Uh, 516th root opening, one inch backing strip, 3 8 plate. We're just going to go ahead and uh, run this out. I'm anticipating about five passes. Uh, so it should be about three, three layers of weld. Uh, we're going to run stringers in here because as you know from our previous video, stringers are better than weaves. Tell us how you really feel about that in the comments. All right, guys, so as far as settings, we're going to be running some 7525 Argon CO2 mix. We're using Select Arc 308L, 40 CFH per the manufacturer's recommendation. I've got 24 volts, 250 inches per minute. Uh, we're going to hold, we're going to maintain about a 5 8 to 3 quarter inch stick out. If that stick out gets too short, uh, that could lead to porosity. So, you know, I want to give that, that wire time to do what it needs to do. Get the chemicals on the inside of that wire because it is a flux cord process. Give that uh, those elements time to heat up, uh, to, you know, to where they can perform and, and do what they're supposed to do. So we're just going to go ahead and start welding this out. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit in between passes to keep this from getting excessively hot. I want a nice silver weld when I'm in here. I'm not looking for rainbows or anything like that. I want to keep any carbide precipitation to a minimum. Keep all the colors out of the out of the welds because. If you have colors in your stainless process, you know, that could lead to ox that is oxidization and, you know, we don't want that depending on the type of application. So we're going to go ahead and try to keep that down to a bare minimum. And now we will. All right, well that laid in there pretty smooth. Let's go ahead and, uh, Flux has had time to solidify. We'll go ahead and chip it and see what we got underneath. Flag's typically a little bit more difficult to get out on the root than the subsequent pass. All right, so now I'm gonna put in pass number two. Pass number two, I'm gonna put up against the sidewall closest to you guys at home. I wanna try and maintain I want to be below the top of that material about 1 16th of an inch and then I'll follow that up with the next pass that'll be closest to me overlapping the second pass roughly 50% again staying about a 16th below the top edge of that plate. All right, so for one, for most people, one G is a, a fairly simple position to weld in, um, but you know you always want to take advantage of everything that you can. Now, because I'm relatively short, I'm about five eight with my boots on. Um, instead of trying to pick that gun up even higher and wedge back into here, where I want to kind of point my travel angle, I'm just going to rotate my plate. Now I can still weld left to right. It's going to have really no bearing 
on that grain structure. It's not gonna change anything. It's just gonna be more of a benefit to me. Now, if I was out in the field somewhere and didn't have the ability to rotate the plate, I could always walk to the other side of it, <clears throat> stand on the other side or whatever, just to be able to get in there where it's more comfortable, where I can you know, get in there with my travel angle and I don't have to hoist my arm up so far. I mean, let's say that this was, you know, longer than a foot, you know, it's, it's bigger, two foot, three foot, whatever, you know, you want to get comfortable when you're doing this. Um, and there's no rules against it. So, I mean, take every advantage that you can always be comfortable. Uh, it's just going to help you, you know, become a better welder. I mean, if you can't get onto that other side, oh, well, you know, suck it up, uh, buy a helmet, life sucks. Right. Uh, and then just get up in there and, 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 go through that joint with that, you know, in that awkward position. Sometimes you gotta get in awkward spots to get the job done. Uh, but when you can, take advantage of the easy stuff. Hey, can you hit that fume, Mike? Basically what I'm going to do is take the center of my wire and point it on the toe of my previous weld and I should lap up onto the material 50% and lap onto this weld 50%. I may end up with um, a total of six beads versus the five I originally anticipated. We'll see how this cap goes.
All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps it up. I got the, uh, the three bead cap on here, so we ended up with six welds. Not a big deal, still within the acceptable limits. Uh, I'm above flush and below eighth inch. That's pretty much what I was looking for. Don't have any major discoloration. I've got like a nice straw hue to it, which uh, would be acceptable. I shouldn't have to worry about any oxides forming on the top. You want to stay away from those deep blues and purples and things of that nature. Uh, I want to thank Praxair today for, um, for loaning us the tech system, as well as Abacor Benzel for loaning us the torch so we could do this demo. Uh, stainless steel is definitely not something you want to be huffing in on those gases, so thank you to both of these companies for helping us out, uh, put this demonstration on for you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, even if you didn't enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button. Uh, hit that notification bell so that way you'll get notifications every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when we put out new content uh, at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. And until next time, make every weld better than your last. Hey guys, welcome back to another segment of HelpMeWeld.com. Remember, if you want to be featured on Weld.com, make sure to like and subscribe to our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram and use hashtag HelpMeWeld.com. So today's submission is from Alejandro Flores. He's running some 6013 at around 70 amps. Wants to know how he's doing and looking for some constructive criticism. Alejandro, I'll tell you one thing, your welds, uh, you know, for just starting out and you said you were welding on the stairs of your house, uh, you know, the stairs, they don't look too bad, okay? Um, one thing I would recommend is it looks like you're, they're a little bit cold. Uh, I can tell that because it's not, your, your toes aren't wetting into the base metal like they should be. So one thing you could do is turn your amps up. I would recommend getting into that 90 amp range somewhere in there. Also know that the uh, 6013s are an F2 classification rod, which means they're good for sheet metal, so they don't have a lot of penetration. Uh, so just understand that before you, you, know, you go welding on anything structural, I wouldn't use these rods for that application. Um, but what you can do is turn the heat up, uh, lay that first pass down on, the, on your material, and then your second pass should go on the toe of the previous weld. So point that electrode right at the toe of the previous weld. What that's gonna do, that's gonna allow 50% of that second weld to lap over that first weld. The other 50% of that weld is gonna tie into the base metal, which is what you want. That's gonna keep you on track. You're gonna develop a good muscle memory for when you get into lap joints and T-joints and, and things of that nature. So, you know, just, just watch over that. Um, keep posting up in the group. We'll, we'll be happy to provide more feedback in the comment section uh, if you have any other questions about that. But, I mean, other than that, you're off to a good start. Keep practicing. Uh, get as much rod time as you can. You know, the more welds you make, uh, the better off you're going to be. So just keep at it. Uh, guys, we appreciate you liking and subscribing the channel. So go ahead. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, make every weld better than your last.